So we're continuing on through the book of Esther. Big chunk today, chapters 2 verse 19 to 5 verse 14. It seems that Mordecai is regularly camping out of the palace gates. And it's there that he overhears two of the king's officers plotting to assassinate the king. He tells Esther, she tells the king, and these two schemers get the chop. And it's all recorded in their history books. And then chapter 3 tells us the king promotes a man called Haman in a place of honour above all other nobles and officials, which means that everyone has to bow down and honour him whenever he walks past. But Mordecai, the Jew, refuses to bow down and honour anyone other than God. And that enrages Haman and it fuels a desire in him to want to destroy the Jewish people. So verse 8, Haman uses his powerful position to whisper malicious rumours in the king's ear about how different the Jews were and how they didn't obey the king's laws and how it'd be in the king's best interest to get rid of them. And the king listens. And the king says basically to Haman, okay, do whatever you want with these people. And so Haman appoints a day and sends a decree out that on that particular day, all the Jews, young and old, men, women, children, would all be killed. And so chapter four, we see as this decree goes out, all the Jews are weeping and mourning and Mordecai is wearing sackcloth and ashes at the king's gate. And Esther hears of Mordecai's distress and sends an aid out to find out what's going on. And Mordecai tells the aid all that's happened and gives a copy of the decree to give to Queen Esther and basically says that Queen Esther has to go before the king and plead for mercy on behalf of her people. So the aide goes back, reports this to Esther, and she then reports back to Mordecai and reminds him that if anyone approaches the king without being summoned, then they can be put to death. The only exception is if the king extends his royal scepter and then your life is spared. The aides reported that back and then got the stirring reply back from Mordecai, which is chapter 4, verse 14, where he says, But who knows that you have come to royal position for such a time as this? Mordecai speaks the very best of who she is to her sense of destiny, to the courage that's within her, and it works. So she instructs Mordecai to gather all the Jews and to fast for three days. She knows that she is totally and utterly dependent on God to come through, that she knows that she could perish at this point. So the start of chapter five, it's the third day of the fasting. She puts on her royal robes and goes before the king without being summoned. And when he sees her, he extends the golden scepter and so her life is spared. And he says, what do you want, Esther? I'll give you anything, even half my kingdom. And she has a strange reply. She says, come to a banquet that I'm preparing tomorrow, you and Haman. So they do, and at the banquet they ask again, what do you want? And she says, come to a banquet that I'm gonna prepare for you tomorrow. So Haman's on his way home, feeling all pumped up. He's been given a special treatment, had this uh, banquet hosted by Queen Esther, but then he sees Mordecai, he's immediately consumed with bitterness. And uh, you know, he's a man who is bound up in bitterness and he vents, to his friend saying, um, all this gives me no satisfaction as long as I see that Jew Mordecai sitting at the king's gate. And at that point, his wife and friends suggest that he have a 75 foot gallow built and ask the king in the morning to have Mordecai hanged on it.